Well, it has to do with the apostates. Now, there's uh, something that uh, the apostates are uh, talking about and trying to put forward. The media has picked it up. Others have also picked it up. And that is our scriptural position of having two witnesses a requirement for judicial action if there's no confession. Well, how, how might we do that? Well, we'll go to Matthew chapter 18 and verse 16, because obviously uh, Christ Jesus established the Christian arrangement. And notice what he said, Matthew 18 and verse 16. He says, but if he does not listen, take along with you one or two more, so that on the testimony of two or three witnesses, every matter may be established. So Christ Jesus establishes the fact that there has to be two witnesses. Now, it doesn't mean that if, if there's only one witness, that there's no consequences. There, there might be, depending upon the situation. But the, the scriptures are very clear before judicial committee can be convened, there has to be a confession or two witnesses. So we will never change our scriptural position on that subject. Back to a story we brought you yesterday, and um, it's, it, it's been a, a, what, a, a real labor, this story, to bring it to you. Months of work, hours of meeting victims and some, well, frankly, incredibly graphic accounts. Uh, we can now tell you a Conservative MP is taking the result of our BBC Hereford and Worcester investigation over fresh claims of child abuse within the Jehovah's Witness organisation to Parliament. Yesterday, we revealed at fears that the church's own rules are protecting perpetrators, with one top child abuse lawyer comparing it to the scandal in the Catholic Church. One woman from Worcestershire, who wished to remain anonymous, has come forward to speak for the first time about her experiences within a family of Jehovah's Witnesses. She says she wants a proper apology from the organisation compared to the response when she was a child. My parents wrote to one of the governing bodies within the organisation and said, is this right? Could we do anything else? And they got a letter back which just said they abhor child abuse and they do their utmost to protect young ones in the congregation. But in this case, they'll have to leave it in Jehovah's hands. Jehovah sees all and everything's fine, don't worry. That seems to make my parents fairly content and nothing happened subsequently. What do you think needs to be done now? They need to get rid of the two witness rule and actually that wouldn't be that difficult for them to do because the Jehovah Witnesses quite regularly change their policies. They could go straight to the police, they could actually say, well, we don't talk about this to you or the accused, we're just going to hand it over to the police. And also I think they need to apologise and say, we got it wrong. I think that would actually mean a huge amount to all the victims. The Charity Commission has launched an inquiry into this and now the MP for Cheltenham, Alex Chalk, is going to be raising questions about this in Parliament. Uh, let's talk to Mark and Cora Latham, um, husband and wife, both former Jehovah's Witnesses. They live just down the road in Cheltenham. They've been campaigning on this issue. Good morning, both. Hello. Good morning. Um, Mark, wh what are your concerns then? What, what, what's, what's troubling you most about all of this? I, I think it's um, oh, where to start. I, I, for me, one of the central issues surrounding this is the two witness rule. And as you've, uh, your previous caller has eloquently described, you, you do have this situation where uh, they do have a, a biblical stance on this, and that if individuals come before the clergy class, which is the elders, to uh, bring forward an allegation of molestation or rape, of, of, in particular of children, um, the, the elders will automatically go straight into biblical mindset and look at this from a sinful point of view and describe it to themselves with the strict instructions that they've been given from Bethel. Are there two witnesses to this event? And of course, as we know, the very nature of this type of uh, horrendous crime that happens to children, there are no second witnesses. So if there if isn't a second if there's a, basically, if there isn't a second witness, it couldn't have happened. And, and, it what, couldn't have happened. and the line we kept hearing yesterday was that Jehovah will take care of it. That he will take care of it, trust in Jehovah, leave it with him, and uh, we don't want to cause any disruption within the congregation. We don't want any divisive allegations being brought out publicly. So this needs to be kept very quiet. It's all done right the way down. And uh, but then a very tight grip is kept on this from the headquarters in London, uh, who will then strictly in, uh, go through a set of instructions with that body of elders those that have been given the information as to exactly what to do next. 
which in most cases, according to all of the uh, criminal cases that we've had going through the courts, nothing happens. Absolutely nothing. So Unless could- the individual decides to actually push this forward themselves. Um, Cora, how many cases have you actually seen go to court then and what needs to change? Well, we've not seen that many go to court um, in this country. Um, Unfortunately, what tends to happen is that um, the watchtower gets there first and and tends to squash these cases before they actually reach the public ears. Um, There are, um, there's one that went through the high courts last year, which was actually the the first case that ever reached the high court here in the UK. Um, And there are a few others that are going through at at this very moment. Uh, We've seen recently um, the cases in Australia, which came to light just because a couple of victims decided that they weren't going to take no for an answer and took it all the way through, and the Royal Australia Commission took it up. And um, as a result of that, um, many cases were exposed where there was 106 paedophiles. Um, obviously, many of them have multi, multi um, 1,006 sorry vic- um, paedophiles that were uh, uncovered, which had obviously multiple victims. Um, and that's in Australia, uh, where there's an, an, a, a very much smaller amount of Jehovah's Witnesses in that country compared compared to here in the UK. Now, so, no, Cora, I, I'm going to have to put this, because it it's, a, it's a fair point, isn't it? You are, you're, both, you're both ex-Jehovah's Witnesses. Yeah. You're, you're no longer part of the organisation. And, yeah. and many people, some people, have been saying that, you know, you have an axe to grind and you're making it your mission to, to give the organisation a bad name. What do you say to that? Not at all. Um, I think anybody who says that, 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 that they have to stand back and say, well, would they stand by and watch all of this? just go um, uncovered and, and then exposed and, and not stand by and just stand by and not say anything. When it comes to child molestation, um, whether, whether you have issues or not um, with any, any organisation, I think that if you were to stand by and sit by and not say anything, then you have to, to look at yourself very closely. Um, we have no axe to grind at all when it comes to the organisation. Um, we found all of this out once we started to um, look into things when we left. We knew nothing. When we were Jehovah's Witnesses, we knew nothing about the cover-up of paedophilia within the organisation. Um, and I think that's one of the main things. You're completely blinded to this when you are a Jehovah's Witness. Well, it's going to be raised in Parliament by uh, Cheltenham MP Alex Chalk. Um, what do you want? Uh, what would you want him to say? What would you want him to achieve by doing that? I think what we're looking for is that we, we, we are looking at a serious attempt to, to make sure that the uh, historical uh, child sexual abuse inquiry that's taking place it's, uh, at the moment. We want the Watchtower to be given uh, some serious consideration to be in that investigation to, to look at exactly what it is that they do in regards to their child safeguarding policy here in the UK, United Kingdom. And it has to be brought up. It, it, if it would be an absolute travesty if, if the inquiry goes ahead and the, the Jehovah's Witnesses are not included with serious work and examination of exactly what it is that they do above and beyond what they're supposed to be doing for their child safeguarding policy. You see, the child safeguarding policy, if you go to a Kingdom Hall and ask for it, you won't get one. There isn't one there. It's very, very rare for any Jehovah's Witness to actually get hold of a copy of their child safeguarding policy. And when you do get hold of it, it's actually full of waffle. There's nothing in there that actually indicates how uh, a child should be protected properly by the organisation okay. that, that are looking after those particular congregants. M- Mark, time. Mark, thank you very much for talking to us this morning, Mark and uh, Cora Latham, husband and wife and uh, ex Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, as we said, we've obviously asked the uh, the Watchtower, that's the UK's headquarters of the Jehovah's Witness organisation, to um, come on and talk to us and put their side of the story. They haven't put anyone up for interview and said they, they've given us a statement saying Jehovah's Witnesses abhor child abuse. They do not shield abusers from the authorities or from the consequences of their actions obviously lots more to come on that story in the coming days also it got tons of reaction from you yesterday it's making the national papers today now our bbc hereford worcester investigation into the scale of child abuse among jehovah's witnesses is being taken to parliament uh first though before we do anything else before we get on to our top story it's a, a quick catch up with um, where we were yesterday in the investigation our exclusive investigation that we brought you news of for monday 
Uh, if you remember, our reporter Felicity Kvesic spent three months researching new claims of child abuse within the Jehovah's Witness organisation amid fears that their own rules were protecting perpetrators. Um, you may have seen it on uh, all the national news yesterday. It was on the, uh, the lunchtime news. It was on Midlands Today, one of the most read stories on the uh, BBC News website. And it's in the papers today. Uh, this is the Mail's headline. Uh, Victims of Jehovah's Witness sex abuse told not to report it. And makes the Telegraph as well. Jehovah's Witnesses accused of covering up child abuse victims claim the organisation's teachings have protected offenders. Yeah, one woman from Worcestershire who uh, wished to remain anonymous has come forward to speak for the first time about her experiences within a family of Jehovah's Witnesses. She says she wants a proper apology from the organisation compared to the response that she got when she was a child. In this case, they'll have to leave it in Jehovah's hands. Jehovah sees all and everything is fine, don't worry. That seems to make my parents fairly content and nothing happens subsequently. They need to apologise and say, we got it wrong. I think that would actually mean a huge amount to all the victims. Yeah, it was um, really, really strong stuff. If you heard that yesterday, extraordinarily brave to come forward and uh, and you know sort of stick your head above the parapet like this. But um, it is being taken to Parliament. That's the latest we can bring you. Uh, Conservative MP Alex Chalk uh, is actually going to bring this up in the, in the House of Commons, and uh, we'll be hearing from him shortly. So that's where we're at. More to come on that. It's ten past eight. Now it's taken months of work, hours of meeting victims, and some incredibly graphic accounts. And now Conservative MP is going to raise fresh claims of child abuse within the Jehovah's Witness organisation in Parliament. Now this comes out of our exclusive BBC Hereford and Worcester investigation in which we revealed fears that the church's own rules are protecting perpetrators with one top child abuse lawyer comparing it to the scandal in the Catholic Church. So there we are, that's um, one woman from Worcestershire who's um, come forward very bravely to tell us all about this and obviously wishes to remain anonymous but it's as part of the work that's... Uh, that's been done around this. Our investigation has led to the Conservative MP for Cheltenham getting involved with this. Uh, Alex Chalk, good morning. Good morning to you. Now, you're going to raise this, aren't you, in, in Parliament. What, what do you hope to achieve by, by bringing this to Parliament's attention? Sure. Well, there are two things that I want to do, and one of which I've actually already done. So the first thing is actually to raise it specifically with ministers and, and the government itself. So I've spoken to Robert Goodwill, who's the Minister of State for Children and Families. And I said, look, you know, draw this to the attention of government, saying this is something that needs to be considered. But the real point is this. There is already an inquiry, the independent inquiry into child abuse, which is up and running, which is looking at the broad gamut of abuse potentially perpetrated historically over the, across the piece. I think this needs to be part of that. And I want to make crystal clear, this mustn't be about persecution. It mustn't be about witch hunt. This must follow the evidence. But if there is evidence of impropriety and systematic cover within uh, this, uh, this branch of Jehovah's Witnesses, well, that needs to be looked into, it seems to me. Alex, what, what, have you, what have you heard? Have you had people come forward to you and, and speak to you about this? What kind of evidence have you had brought to you? Well, I've, I've had evidence along the lines of your last um, piece, essentially people suggesting that because of this two-witness rule, that unless the uh, internal, as it were, authorities within the church testified that there are two witnesses to the abuse, it's the nature of this kind of allegation that there very rarely will be more than one, namely the alleged victim, uh, that this will not be put forward, this will not be investigated properly. So it's really consistent with that. Now, I, I want to be clear, these things need to be investigated fairly. Let's work out whether the allegations are true or not true. Let's not prejudge it. But certainly I've heard enough which suggests to me uh, that this is something which, which merits the most careful consideration. Have you had direct contact with the Watchtower, the Jehovah's Witness headquarters? No, I haven't. Um, they haven't made contact with me, and if they are to do so, I'm perfectly prepared to speak to them, of course. Uh, I've had people, constituents, who've come to me to give their accounts, and it seems to me that on the face of it, these are serious allegations. They are supported by what appears to be an undenied position, namely that there are... Uh, there are requirements within the church before things start to be investigated. So you've heard of the two-witness rule, but there's also a sort of informal limitation. In other words, if the allegations are considered to be too old, that they won't be investigated. Well, that's not a principle that's recognised in English law. Mm -hmm. uh, and given that they seem to have some kind of, as it were, independent support to that extent, I think they require further investigation. Well, we've obviously asked to speak to them. They haven't spoken to you, but I mean, I just, just in, 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 you know, in case of balance, they've said, Jehovah's 
witnesses abhor child abuse and do not shield abusers from the authorities or from the consequences of their actions. So that's that, that's what they're saying. But I mean, clearly you have you, you have concerns about their safeguarding. What what do you think needs to change, Alex? Well, I do have concerns about their safeguarding. I, I mean, I also think they've just got to be more transparent and I think they should look to to engage in this process. I'm sure they've made a statement and that's fine, but I think it would be useful to hear from some of the individuals in the church. Let me make it clear again, this isn't about persecution, this is not about saying people can't practice their faith, but it is about saying that in a society which takes its duties towards safeguarding children very carefully, that there has to be absolute transparency about something as serious as this. Of course people must practice their religion, but that is not a license to allow things to take place which are unacceptable. Okay, Alex, thank you very much. I'm sure we'll speak again at some point because he will be um, raising this, as he said, in uh, in front of the ministers in uh, in Parliament. And again, here's a statement from from the Watchtower. Uh, Jehovah's Witnesses abhor child abuse. Do not shield abusers from the authorities or from the consequences of their actions. But uh, you know, equally, it would be good to speak to them. We have given them opportunity, and so far, yet nothing from them. Uh, Twenty five past eight 